Hello everyone. Just a quick video to tell you what I uh, have decided, or perhaps not decided. Um, because of all the things that are happening now, um, I feel a certain uh, responsibility. I posted um, a video, I think it was two days ago, and it was a little bit in jest with a thing here on my ear and so on. Um, but things developed so quickly. It was supposed to be a little bit of something in jest, a little bit of a joke, but things developed so quickly in all sorts of directions. So we had that assassination attempt. Then we had, you know, the uh, the the um, IT glitch all over the world. Then we had uh, yesterday um, President Biden um, saying that he will not run for president. Then um, people started uh, talking about the fact that he hadn't been seen for a few days and what was happening and everyone wondering. And, and I, I thought, um, this is serious. This is not a time for jokes or for jest, you know. So I thought about deleting deleting the uh, the video because I thought for for a while I thought that perhaps it was in bad taste. And then I decided not to because it's like. Uh, it's like a diary of what happens every day or every two days and so I'm reacting to that and I thought not let it let it be like that um, let it stay uh, that was my decision anyway I had been talking in that video about the fact that there is now I, I ended the video saying that the old guard of the old globalists and so on was actually now slowly but surely being replaced by what is called a new right. And one of you said, you know, stop with these conspiracy theories and this and that. And I, I always have a problem. Let me respond to that. I have a problem with everything being called conspiracy theory. Sometimes we have opinions, you know, it's a way of speaking to you or speaking to whoever or to myself out loud and saying what could be happening here because this happened and that happened, could it be this, could it be that? So you're trying to sort it out in your mind, you're thinking out loud. Uh, and so you reach a, a conclusion, it could be the two and two make four, it could be the two and two, you know, you got it wrong and it's five. And, but, but you're trying to, because you don't have all the information and we know that we are lied to by, by you know, governments and so on. They don't always tell us the truth. So, so we're trying to figure it out. I'm trying to figure it out. And so... When I say something, it's because I have thought about it and I reached that conclusion. I, I think I have said this before. It's not that, uh, you know, I have done investigations and here is the evidence and this is absolutely right. No, it's, it's like thinking out loud and just saying, could it be this? Could it be that? You know, and what is wrong with that? It used to be called a hypothesis. It used to be called, you know, just thinking. But the moment that you start thinking, it's like, no, shut up, you know, just accept what is uh, what you're being told, something like that. It's the way this conspiracy theory is a way of putting you down. Just let me think. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out. That's all it is. Okay. It's a conversation. All right. So what I was saying was that... Um, there is this, um, it's almost, well, I was going to say it's almost funny, but nothing is funny. It's, it's, we have passed the, we have passed beyond funny. Okay, this is really serious. And it seems that there are a group of very, very powerful um, tech billionaires, mostly, 
that are replacing or trying to or fighting with, it seems to me, the old oligarchs, as it were, okay? So, um, as, I, as I said, it's not that um, because the fight is between a, a globalism and the nation state, as I said, I think that that is obvious, yeah? It has been for 20 years. Um, that the new right, as they are called now, um, they they are trying to do things in a different way. And I said, it's not as if they're going to, they're the good guys and they're going to come and put their billions at the feet of the lumpen proletariat or anything like that. But they think, I, I think that that they are trying to to keep the empire as it were as it were they are, they they feel that they have to do it in a different way that perhaps you don't always have to do it in terms of war or something like that okay so um and in this in this new group you have the high tech people you have uh uh, Musk and you have uh, Peter Thiel and you have uh, uh, David Sachs and, and, and quite a few others, okay? And uh, they, I have been listening and reading about these types, these uh, gentlemen, because it seems as if I hear that the new nominee for vice president, J.D. Vance, is um, was influenced by them, or perhaps some say is part of them, their, their group, and so on. So I was, I was thinking, okay, who are these people? I had never heard myself of Peter Thiel. Okay, so I uh, apparently is very influential, uh, billionaire. And he contributed to J.D. Vance uh, when he was running for senator, and perhaps even now, I don't know, he contributed uh, millions to his campaign and so on. So people are associating him, they're associating the two. So I said, okay, so who is this Peter Thiel? So I um, watched quite a few videos given by him, one at the uh, Oxford University Union about eight years ago, another one at the Cambridge University Union here in England, and then several interviews. And then I didn't want to hear any more because he was actually just repeating the, the, the same things. But it seemed to me that uh, what what he was saying was that you don't necessarily if I was reading between the lines, if if I'm right in reading between the lines, that you don't necessarily need to go globalist all the way and forget the people in the nation state. You can still do and accomplish a lot of things without leaving so many people behind. Now, um, I won't repeat it because I, I spent hours actually listening to him. Okay. The reason that J.D. Vance is associated with him is because he himself said that in back in 19, uh, uh, sorry, 2014, 15, uh, when he was uh, st not, uh, he had just finished university or during his last years at university, Peter Thiel ha came, came to speak to his, univer uh, his university and um, he was very much influenced by what he was saying. He actually agreed with it and so on. Okay. In this uh, group, seems to people seem to include also Tucker Carlson, for example. So anyway, I looked at other people. I, I, I read the essay that... Um, I didn't read the book that J. D. Vance uh, wrote in 2014, Hillbilly Elegy. I haven't read that, but I read several uh, the transcript of several interviews and an essay that he wrote. Um, what is the name of it? Um, something about resistance, something like that. And he mentions several people. 
And so I went to these other several people and they are all actually quite different. Um, for example, there is uh, there are one or two Catholics, uh, serious Catholics. Peter Thiel, who uh, presents himself as a Christian, I suppose Protestant, um, people from very different different uh, ways of life. For example, some very uh, sober with a wife, uh, you know, a wife and married with kids and so on. Uh, Peter Thiel, or Thiel, sorry, um, he's, a, he's a gay man and he's married to this uh, other man and um, um, there were some problems there because he took a, a lover and uh, while he was married and then, um, oh, scandal anyway, the lover who was a model uh, apparently um, sort of how can I avoid the word for YouTube? Anyway, he he uh, he, he killed himself. Um, in other words, very very different lifestyles. These influences that he says that he had came from very different sources. One on economics, the other one on uh, society, and and very many different influences. Now. I'm also aware that there is a, um, uh, a, a an investigative reporter, Whitney Webb, who's very much uh, very much acclaimed, um, um, and he says that don't think that J D Vance is such a good thing. I saw the videos and the interviews in Jimmy Dore and the others and the others. So I was trying to to see what, what what is the problem now with these associates. And I don't think they're associates. I think they're just people who influenced him in different ways. But anyway, she says, don't think that he's such a good thing because he's actually one of them too, the donor class, all those uh, people. And the thing about Whitney Webb is that he ha she has a lot of information. She is not lying about what she says. Um, most of us don't have time to do that kind of investigation, but she is like an encyclopedia. She can tell you, oh, yes, you know, 10 years ago, he worked for this company and then he went to the other and, and he merged. She knows everything. You cannot dispute those facts, I don't think. I don't think she's got them wrong at all. I do have a little bit of a problem because although I will accept the facts that he she puts on the table, I might not necessarily agree with her interpretation of those facts. The facts remain facts and I think she, she, she's probably got everything right. I'm not disputing that. But the interpretation that she gives, I, if I may, might differ. I don't know yet. But I, I might differ with that interpretation, okay? Because I think she is particularly good at deductive reasoning, but that doesn't mean that she can employ inductive reasoning and get to the right conclusion. Um, she is, if I can put it this way, a sort of more of a... Um, an engineer rather than a philosopher, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I might decide that. So I'm, I'm, I'm str well, it's not a struggle really, it's just that I'm trying to figure out who J.D. Vance is and what makes him kick and what, what he's what he's up to, <laughs> whether he is telling us the truth or whether he's another one who appears to say the right things to the workers, to the middle class, and perhaps is not. I'm trying to figure out if he is, if he is deceiving us in some way, okay? Um, we, have to, we have to know the difference between a lie, a straight lie, and uh, as I said, uh, before and her younger sister 
deception, which which might be much more dangerous, actually, because it's, it's much more difficult to figure it out. And so I was thinking, um, how can I get to to see what you know what I'm going to think of him? And I thought that perhaps um, his conversion to Catholicism will give me will give me a clue. Of course, I don't know the man. I will never know the man. But I do know Catholicism. <laughs> What I, what I want to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. What I want to say is that, look, we are all, perhaps because of our, our earlier influences, whatever it might be, we all have something that we are good at. And because of my background, which I told you many times, okay, but, uh, you know, uh, I, was, I was raised by nuns. And from the age of seven until the age of, well, from the age of five, but uh, I mean, uh, the, but certainly from the age of my first communion, I got Catholicism every single day of my life. Okay, every single day of my life. It's as if they had, you know, they asked me to open my mouth, put Catholicism there, and it has taken me a, a, a lifetime to digest that seed. Okay, I don't want to <laughs> romanticize or say something stupid here, but what I really want to say is that I know the Catholic faith. That's to make me a good Catholic, but I do know it. So when I hear someone, for example, saying, well, this, this, uh, you know, I'm Catholic and this and that, I said, sometimes I can say, no, that's not it, not quite. Um, uh, it happens a lot with people who convert, for example, for all the good reasons, welcome. Um, but sometimes they will say something which is a little bit out of tune. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, ah, I, uh, you know, okay, okay, let me give you an example. I heard this the other day in a panel or an interview, was it? About Christianity, blah, 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 they were talking about, and and the interviewer said, well, what is the most important thing about Christianity? And the, uh, the person who was not Catholic, he, he was Protestant, he said, the resurrection. Obviously, the most important thing about Christianity is the resurrection. Without the, re the uh, resurrection, and I immediately thought, no, no. The most important thing about Christianity, and I'm not a theologian, but you know what? I, I just know what I know. <laughs> there are a lot of things that I don't know, but what I know, I know. No, the most important thing about Christianity is not the resurrection. Of course, if it was God, he could resurrect. The most important thing about Christianity is his death on the cross. That is the most important thing and that that God incarnated and for the love of man died for us on a cross like a slave, like a common criminal. He was made man and he was judged by men and found wanting and all for love of mankind it is the it is his death at the cross it is people spitting at him it is people uh, flogging him that is his death is the most important part of christianity the resurrection of course of course but if God can create the world, he can resurrect. Important. But it is his death on the cross. 
I don't know whether you agree with me or not, but I have a feeling that I am right. If I was to ask at least a Catholic theologian, I don't know. Perhaps I will write to uh, Dr. Taylor Marshall, uh, send him an email or something. I don't even know how to get to him. Anyway, what I'm saying is that I know Catholicism. So if I were to be in a situation that I could speak directly to J.D. Vance, <laughs> which will never happen, obviously, but if, he, if I, if, we'll get to know him. Because of his position now, he will be giving interviews and writing things and so on. And I will be able to detect quite a lot from, from his view of society and human dignity and uh, mankind and all, all that sort of thing. He said, he said that one of the great influences was... Uh, St. Augustine, but that's that's fine, obviously, but um, St. Augustine is okay with Catholic and uh, Catholics and Protestants, even Calvin himself, my goodness, Calvin, okay? Even he is that in that big book that uh, he wrote, The Principles of Christianity, something like that, um, he practically quotes Augustine in every page. He doesn't agree with him in saying that about the Eucharist and how it is a sin not to worship it and all kinds of things. But nevertheless, Augustine is okay with Protestants. I need more than Augustine. I have to tell you, I'm not here trying to judge his his beliefs or his piety or his Catholicism or whether he's true to it. No, no, that 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 is a man's soul. I cannot possibly look into his soul. I ha I, I I have difficulty looking into mine. No, I'm not judging. I'm ju I'm just trying to get a scent for for the man. And I won't be able to do that until we get more interviews and I, we can get more into, I, I personally can get more into if he really looks at the world from a Catholic viewpoint or if he's another millionaire who's just there telling us what we want to hear. I haven't decided yet. And because I haven't decided, I cannot agree with the journalist whom I respect, uh, Whitney Webb, that, you know, that is, you know, it's like one of them, you know, one more of those people who lie, regardless of the connections that he might have. So uh, he was influenced by people who were very different. They might have had things in common. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it there. Okay. I'm not going to talk about that anymore um, and I'm going to be very careful uh, about talking uh, uh, talking about politics now because I think what is going on is really serious and uh, today I was going to try to get up to date with what is happening with President Va Biden whether uh, he has spoken to the people or not, but I had a problem with my computer. You went, oh my goodness, it took me the whole evening to sort it out. Only that I was recording, I was going to record this, and then I couldn't, I always, before I post it, I always um, check it to make sure that the light is kind of right and the search and the sound is right. And there was no sound and I couldn't figure it out. Oh my goodness, it, I had to go to Google. They were um, helping me, but it took like four hours. So I have, I don't know what has happened today. Um, but there are so, so many people talking about so many different things that um, I think we are at a moment um, when ah, all the masks have come off and I don't know whether it is just 
war come what may or whether it's what what is it um, but we cannot joke about it anymore we really we, we live in in dangerous times um don't need to tell you that but in any case um so i'm th i think i'm going to leave politics for a while and i'm going to continue talking about the things I used to talk. After all, the uh, the channel is called Interpret and Tradition, so I was bringing to you, you know, the things that you could learn from the past. Not so much from the past, but... Um, oh, yes. Uh, about that v video yesterday where I, you know, um, I got a... Um, <laughs> I had to change the title. Now I know... Because they Google uh, YouTube uh, sent me a message saying that um, they couldn't promote it or they couldn't because of regulations on the American election, something like that. So I should perhaps change the title or something. So I had to change it from who governs and who has governed to what's happening, <laughs> what hasn't happened, and, and it worked. It, it, it went through. So now I know that when I mention something specific like President Trump or President Biden or whatever, uh, they're, not, they're not going to promote it. They're, they're going to try to, to keep it low. So now I learned anyway. But um, this is the book. And I used this because I thought such a such a great title, Peeling the Onion, uh, by Gunter Grass. So I changed the title to Peeling the Onion, uh, What's Happening, What Has Happened, and so on. It's a terrific book. Uh, I'm reading sort of halfway through it, and I will let you know if you haven't read it, what it is about. It's actually his autobiography. Written in 2007, he passed away now. So I'm going to do more of other things than politics, unless I feel this terror, <laughs> this 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 need to go and tell you what I think about something. My goodness, um, yeah. So um, I hope you're well. I hope you're well and uh, let us hope and pray that uh, the world might uh, come to its senses. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.